Hello everyone, Mr. Lipchick here, and what we're going to discuss today is the Incident Command System. This is the system that is recommended by the Homeland Security Department to deal with all kinds of different sizes of emergency. Um, so, the Incident Command System is a standard management hierarchy uh, and procedures for managing temporary incidents of any size. The incident command system is flexible and can be used by organizations of any size. Uh, and it is a temporary configuration used to meet the demands of an emergency event. The goals of the incident command system include providing a unified and authorized command structure for incidents, allowing personnel from many agencies to form a management structure with a common terminology, providing logistical and administrative support to operational staff, and cost effectiveness by avoiding duplicative efforts and continuing overhead. Elements of the command system include establishment and transfer of command. Command must be established from the beginning of an incident and the next commander briefed on the situation. A chain of command and unity of command. This is an orderly line of authority with the system to prevent con within the system to prevent confusion, resolve conflicts, and provide direction. And a unified command, and this allows different agencies to work together without impacting agency authority, uh, responsibility, or accountability. Planning and organizational structure. Management by objectives. Uh, th this is developing overall incident strategies and objectives and specific directives to achieve them. Modular organization. Uh, this plan and command system develops in a modular fa fashion based on the size and complexity of the incident and specific ha hazards. Incident action planning. Uh, communicating incident objectives in terms of operations and support and a manageable span of control. The span of control for any individual with supervisory responsibilities should range from three to seven subordinates. Uh, this is to make it a more effective leadership system. The incident commander. This is the individual responsible for the overall incident management. Uh, the first and or highest ranking member of the team to arrive on the scene is the initial incident commander. Uh, they establish a command post, brief the next commander to take over, and they are responsible for leading the team to its overall objective until they are relieved. If nobody comes to relieve them, they're responsible for the entire incident. Uh, a command staff exists in this system, and that's uh, where subordinate leaders are responsible uh, for the functional aspects of the incident command structure, reporting directly to the incident commander uh, in the fashion that you see to the right in that diagram. We have a public information officer uh, who determines on the direction of the incident commander what information is to be released and briefs the media. We have a safety officer uh, who identifies uh, and mitigates hazardous situations, investigates accidents, and stops unsafe practices. And a liaison officer who assists agency representatives and helps with interagency communications. You also have, under the incident commander, uh, a number of sections. A section is an organizational level responsible for a primary segment of incident management. You have an operations section, a planning section, a logistical section, and a finance and administration section. Each section is headed by a section chief who reports directly to the incident commander. The operations section's chief. Uh, the, this person assists with developing the strategy needed to accomplish the mission. Uh, they supervise the resources needed to accomplish the incident objective. They request additional uh, resources to support operations. And supervise the execution of operations. And also approve the release of resources from operational assignments. The planning section chief. Uh, this individual manages the planning process, provides status reports for the operation, 
collects and manages operational data, reassigns personnel, determines the need for specialized resources, and oversees preparation for the demobilization plan. Uh, the logistics section chief orders resources, develops transportation, communications, and medical plans, provides food services, transportation, equipment maintenance and fuel, medical services for responders if needed, and management of all incident log logistics, as well as oversees the demobilization of resources. And uh, finally, the Finance Administration Section Chief. Uh, this person develops the cost analyses of the different aspects of the incident, keeps the operation within its financial limits, develops contracts, pays for incident resources, sets up incident, an incident commissary if necessary, ensures personal fi personnel finance records are correct, and ensures that all financial obligation records are signed, and completes a financial analysis of the incident and briefs the incident commander on it. Facilities and resources. Incidents, incident locations and facilities, the type of operational support facilities established in the vicinity of an incident, uh, this, these include incident command posts, bases and camps, staging areas, triage areas, mass casualty triage areas. Uh, comprehensive resource management involves maintaining up-to-date records of personnel, equipment, and supplies and facilities used in the incident and communications and information management uh, involves integrated communications which is the development and use of common communications plans uh, equipment and processes and information and intelligence management and that is processing process process for gathering analy gathering analyzing sharing and managing incident related information and intelligence professionalism uh, is something that you uh, would seek using this model. Uh, this involves accountability within all areas of the ICS to include check-in, that is reporting and receiving assignments, incident action plan or IAP uh, must be followed by everybody, unity of command, each individual has only one supervisor, Personal responsibility, all responders use good judgment and are responsible for their actions. Span of control, supervisors uh, must be able to adequately supervise and control their subordinates. Resource tracking, supervisors must record and report resource reassignments when they occur. Uh, also dispatch and deployment, personnel and equipment should respond only when requested by an appropriate authority. Transfer of command. This must go smoothly to maintain an unbroken response. Uh, incoming commander should do a personal assessment of the situation with the current commander. The incoming commander must be adequately briefed. After the briefing, the incoming commander should determine a time to transfer for the transfer of command. Uh, and notice of the change in command should be made at the appropriate time. And the incoming commander may give the outgoing commander another assignment on the incident. Demobilization. Uh, the elimination of wasted resources. This is very important to be aware of. Uh, ensuring safe, efficient, cost-effective release of resources and personnel. And after an event, there is a natural tendency to want to relax. However, this can... Uh, this is an important time to learn from the incident, care for equipment, and plan for the next event. Okay, thank you very much for attending, and uh, I hope to see you in the next live lesson. And.
and please have a good day. Bye-bye.